All right, you have finished editing your program and you're excited to share it with the world. But you might be wondering at this point, just how do I do that? How do I get my edited program out of EDIUS in a file format that I can share with my friends or upload to the internet or send to my client or send to the broadcast station for play there? And so over the next few lessons, we're going to take a look at a variety of different options that you have with EDIUS in uh, getting your project out to the world. All right, so here we have a completed timeline ready to export and uh, ready to share with the world. Now, the first thing that I will do, at least this is the way that I like to do it. Apparently, some broadcasters prefer to, to do it a different way, but uh, you can decide later what's best for you. But what I like to do before I go to export is I will set an in and an out point for the portion of the video that I want to export. So let's for, say, for example, I want to export the complete entire program. I will take my timeline cursor and place it at the very beginning of my program. Let's expand out our timeline here. I'll probably leave uh, maybe three seconds of black. And so we could time it out. Let's press the space bar here and test it out. Yeah, that's about three about three seconds. So let's set our in point there. We can do that by hitting the keyboard shortcut I for in. And then we can go to the very end of our program and set our out point. Looks like we already have set an out point there. Again, I usually like to allow for about three or four seconds of black there. And now with those uh, in and out points set, we have told Edius the portion of our timeline that we want to export. If we only wanted to uh, export a, a small portion of our video, say we've made a few corrections for our client and we just want to show them that section of the video that uh, we have made the corrections to by hitting the O key for, for out. And now when we go to export and tell Edius we only want to export this portion, then that's all that Edius would export. So that's an important concept to understand We'll set this back to the out point and uh, then we're ready to export. And if this is the first time that you've done an export, you might be uh, wondering uh, just how to do that. Well, hit the F11 key on your keyboard and this will bring up your export dialog box or your print to file dialog box. And you'll notice that there are a lot of options. The first one we want to look at here is this little box here. By default, I believe that Edius is still shipping with this box unticked. And at least they did in previous versions. I'm not sure about uh, version 7, whether that comes unticked by default. But it's important to understand uh, the uh, difference here. If you leave this box unticked, Edius will export your entire timeline regardless of where you have set your in and out points. So as we look at my timeline here, for example, we see there's a lot of black space here at the beginning of our timeline. If we left this box unchecked, uh, it would include all of this minute or so of black at the beginning of our program and uh, may indeed also <laughs> export all the black on the other end of the timeline if we don't have that box ticked. All right. Well, in this lesson, what I would like to do is just to briefly give you an overview of the types of options that you have here when you go to export. Now, from this long list of options that we have here, uh, I'm going to make it simple and say that there are basically only four that I would normally choose from. There will be times when a client or a broadcast station will request a very specific type of file format that will work with their equipment. And uh, when they call for videos or call for uh, TV spots, uh, they like to recommend a particular type of file format and codec and bitrate that they like. And so that's why Edius has given us this big long list of options here. And so, for example, as we talk about Infinity or K2 or MXF or P2 or 
a XAVC or XD CAM. These are the types of proprietary codecs that you might want to consider if a particular TV station is asking for a very unique type of file format and codec settings. Otherwise, I would say that there's really only four main options that you would want to consider for a normal type of export for normal type of purposes. And so just uh, in this uh, overview session uh, orientation, shall we call it, let's just look at these main four and why we might want to use those. First of all, let's take a look at the Grass Valley uh, AVI file format. This is the type of file format that you would want to use for your own purposes primarily, unless you're sending it out to a friend who also has EDIUS installed on their computer and wants to be able to use a very high quality AVI file in their edit sessions on their EDIUS equipment. However, it's important to know that if you save your program in this Grass Valley HQ file, and you send it to a friend who does not have EDIUS installed on their computer, it is very likely that they will not be able to play your project, their, their, your program. They just, their computer will not be able to understand the compression format that you've sent the file in. Now, it is possible for them to actually go to Grass Valley website and download the codec and install it on their computer, uh, and if they go to that process, they will be able to actually play it on their computer. But natively, without going through that process, downloading those codecs, they will very likely not be able to play your program. So just know that when you do save to one of these Grass Valley options, that that is primarily for your own archival purposes, uh, or to be able to take your exported file and bring it into another project, or just uh, save on a hard drive for five years down the road when you might want to bring this uh, uh, media back into another project. And in a later tutorial, we'll explain uh, the various options here and when you might want to use that or even the uncompressed version. Actually, the uncompressed, we might uh, make a comment on now. If you did need to send your project out to someone who is editing uh, with another type of uh, editing software that doesn't have Grass Valley products installed on their computer. Uh, this might be an option that you might, might want to consider if you want to send them the most highest possible resolution of your project that their computer will be able to read. Say they're working with you know Adobe products, uh, After Effects, and you want to send them the highest possible quality uh, version of your project but they don't have Grass Valley installed on their computer, well, this would be an option that you could choose and uh, very likely uh, they would be able to read that. Another option that I will often use is the H264 slash AVC uh, option here. You'll see that this opens up a variety of different options that you can actually encode to. Uh, you can do flash video or the MP4 type of uh, file format Blu-ray, PlayStation, iPod. Uh, <clears throat> we'll take another look at this in a future tutorial, but just know for now that this is the type of setting that you'll want to experiment with if you want to export your project into a, a, a compressed version that gives you a low file size that you can sh easily share with friends and family on a USB stick or uh, even upload to the internet. They can download it and uh, be able to play it on almost any computer. These are very uh, common file formats that, uh, that everybody should be able to watch. And in a later tutorial, we'll guide you through some of the settings that you should probably be aware of when you do use this, this uh, export option so that your video, uh, even though it is compressed, will still look good. All right, the QuickTime option is our third choice. And this is a file format that is, of course, popular on Mac computers. In fact, some iPods, iPads, and uh, other Apple devices may not play some of these other uh, file formats. And so if you're sending it to a friend who only has uh, an iPad 
uh, you might want to consider choosing one of these options. Now it is also here where you can choose some Grass Valley HQ QuickTime file formats that can be easily imported into a Final Cut Pro environment. So if, if you are sending some of your files, your clips, your media out to people who are working on a Mac and they're working with Final Cut Pro, this is the type of file format that you'll probably want to choose when you're exporting for that purpose. And uh, again, before your Mac editor, your Final Cut Pro editor, will be able to work with these file formats, they are going to have to go to Grass Valley and download the codec and install it onto their Mac system before they will be able to read these files on their Mac system. But they are free. It just takes a minute to download and install these codecs on their computer and they will be able to read your files in a very high quality QuickTime file format. And then our last option that is probably one of four main options here that you'll probably want to consider on a day-to-day -day basis uh, is a Windows Media uh, option. And this will export your program into a file format that can be a very high quality uh, and can be easily played on practically every computer that's out there. And is a file format that can be easily uploaded to the internet, uploaded to Facebook, YouTube, other file sharing websites uh, where they accept video. Uh, they'll be able to accept the Windows Media just fine. And so this is a good option when you want to send a fairly high quality version of your video to the internet. Now, they may actually convert the file that you send to their own proprietary codec to be able to display optimally using their software. But at least this is a file format that is so standard that every website on the internet, every file sharing site, YouTube, Facebook, Fimo, SmugMug, all of these will uh, understand uh, Windows Media Video just fine and be able to convert it with no problem. All right, so those are the main four options and uh, kind of what I wanted to show you in this introductory session on how to export your video. And in uh, uh, future tutorials, we'll go into more depth uh, on these four and uh, maybe show you a few options that you might want to consider if you need to send these out to broadcast stations where they're asking for a very proprietary codec or file format. All right, but uh, for now, I believe that that does it on understanding your options when you need to export your video.